thank you. How on earth did you guys get all of us women in one room together? 40 people together to shoot the cover of Vogue, Edward. It's an insane concept. <laughs> I still can't believe it happened. I'm gonna need to see the cover to believe it. I just met Victoria Beckham for the first time, and I've been a fan um, of her, but also I love her line. Are you kidding? Of cosmetics, and I loved the show about her and her family. I came to New York just for the shoot, and I'm staying in Linda Evangelista's um, house. We are very good friends. But I told her something. I said, I feel so honored to be in a cover with you and some of the girls that transform fashion. I would like to ask Naomi a question. What will you remember the most about Edward's British Vogue era? Thank you, Adut, my little daughter. Risk-taking, breaking the barriers. What I will remember most about Edward's British Vogue is being able to see myself in the fashion industry. Edward really represents change like the elitist old ways of fashion, where there was such a hierarchy. I feel like Edward has dismantled so much of that. It can't be a trend. The positive momentum that we've made these past few years, it has to be a mainstay. How do I word it? I need to practice this in my head. I will remember the most about Edward's British Vogue, shooting my first British Vogue cover. Iman, what's the one thing that people would be surprised to know about Edward? Wow, Naomi, uh, you know, the thing that will surprise people about Edward is his resilience. It's not in your face, but he's very resilient. One thing people would be surprised to know about Edward, he is so grounded, so humble, and has the sweetest soul. And also, the guy knows how to get down for a party and can dance, like he can move his hips. He loves a party and I am a self-proclaimed party girl, but he can out party me. I think what would surprise people the most about Edward is that he's a sweetheart and he's a great friend and he's funny as hell. I've known Edward for a long, long time and he's very sweet and very kind. I always look forward to those lunches or dinners that we might have together. <sighs> I think the one thing that people would be surprised to know about Edward is how deliciously funny he is. He cracks me up. There has not been a time I've been with him or on the phone or even texting that I'm not using the emoji. <laughs> I'm a rebellious human being. I'm someone who, you know, breaks a lot of rules and I'm someone who fights back against even this industry, and Edward could easily have just shunned me, and he hasn't. He has consistently supported me and held me up and given me so much love. Fucking love him. My favorite Edward cover would be his first cover with Adwa. His first cover with Adwa. The first cover with Adwa. I love Adwa's. It felt like an absolute whirlwind. I had this school route when I was back at school and you passed through Shepherd's Bush roundabout. And I looked out the car and it was all over the roundabout. And I was just like, I mean, it was mad. My favorite cover has been the supermodel cover just because it's just like, come on, this is Vogue, this is fashion, this is a moment. And of course, Edward was the one to do it. I loved shooting my British Vogue cover with Edward um, because it was with Christy Turlington and Linda Evangelista and Naomi Campbell. Edward worked in partnership with us. You know, he talked to us about the photographer beforehand, how we wanted to be seen. It was so collaborative. His Linda Evangelista cover, she had been very open about feeling insecure about the way that she looks and, and feeling as though she wasn't as beautiful as she used to be. And she was so honest and open and vulnerable so publicly. And it's so Edward to do this defiantly made sure that she feels as beautiful as she is, reminded her of what an icon and a legend she is, but also the Beyonce where she's on a horse and she's got this extraordinary headpiece on. Naomi and her daughter, that will forever just be iconic. I mean, Naomi and her daughter is pretty special. Kate and Lila, uh, it's really nice seeing them both together and passing on that heritage. Lila Moss. The new supers with Paloma. Definitely. The African models. The African model cover. It's the celebration of African beauties. Malala's. That was just incredible. I, I loved her cover. I 
think it has to be Judy Dench. Same. Judy Dench. Jody and Stormzy, that was really incredible. I love those. Stormzy, just because he's like the king of London, the king of England, so it felt super cool to see him on the cover. I love the Rihanna Truth cover. I loved Cara's with her little bonnet. Bless her. My favorite British Vogue cover, of course it's mine, okay? <laughs> this is my first ever British Vogue cover, and it was very special because right before COVID, something to remember. Well, that's really hard without nominating. My own. Oprah. <laughs> um, she's such a legend. The Oprah cover was just so regal and gorgeous. The issue that I remember most, I think, is the essential workers issue. It was amazing. They were just regular people. It was a nurse. It was people from everyday walks of life. That, that was my favorite cover. My favorite ever. And such a brilliant idea. What I love the most about shooting my book cover, my first book cover with Edward was how I was surrounded by a bunch of friends. It was like, it was a very familiar space. I remember Edward brought his dog on set. I had my first cover with Vogue and it was one of the most incredible images. We shot on the River Thames at dawn. So it was really a night shoot that became a, a morning shoot. It was a really special experience watching the sun come up together and being by Tower Bridge. I've been so utterly and completely excited every month that British Vogue comes out since Edward has been um, at the helm. More than any other magazine, everyone always looks gorgeous. He always makes everyone feel gorgeous. Can fashion help change the world? I never even thought of fashion as being a viable platform or venue for changing the world before Edward Innenfull. So I think fashion can change the world if you have someone in a leadership position who is using purposely, intentionally, fashion to change the world. Fashion has the responsibility to help change the world. We're one of the biggest polluters, and therefore it's our responsibility to clean up the supply chain, to make clothes, better and um, to create a circular industry. So I think we can have a huge impact in one of the greatest challenges we're facing with climate change. We are the only ones that can do something about the existential crisis that is the climate crisis. I think it's important that in every possible way, we encourage women to rise into leadership positions. Well, I think for women in fashion and in tech, just what we need now and what, we, what we've always needed is just a seat at the table more representation in all leadership positions. So whether that's more female designers or female CEOs. I have definitely felt a positive change in how my particular industry views me um, in terms of race. When I started playing tennis, it was no one that looked like me outside of my sister. Everyone is so excited now to see a new face and to see someone that is different and embracing that. And I think that change has been so amazing to watch. I'd like to ask a question to Salma Hayek. What is the best thing about being a woman in the 2020s? Well, I get to be a woman in the 2020s in my 50s. Oh, I'm so grateful that I was not a woman in my 50s in the 90s. This is the best time because it is a time where we're not dismissed as easily because we have a voice now. The best thing about being a woman in the 2020s is that we are unstoppable. The fact that we've embraced sisterhood in this way and we understand that actually for all standing together, we stand taller and prouder. What do I love about living in 2024? For me, I'm in Mumland and I'm discovering so many cartoons and things that I missed when I was a child and getting to relive through my son and my daughter. Uh, 2024, um, I hope to God that humanity finds its center core and um, we go back to peace. It's been very challenging 2023. So I'm hoping 2024, we will go back to humanity. Each year, I'm so grateful, A, just to just to have the chance to have another year, have another day, to be alive, to grow, to learn. I think where we can do better in 2024 is recognizing we're more the same than we are different. 
We can do better in 2024 in a lot of ways. Um, I think that we've taken a massive step with equality and a lot of you know, positive steps in the right direction with that, but we still don't get equal pay everywhere and people could be a lot kinder. What I love about living in 2024 is the diversity of voices, how everybody has a means through social media, through their platforms, through their work, through their art, to have a voice. And I think the way we can all do better is to allow all of those voices to be heard even when you disagree. Finally, I've got a question for you. Jane Fonda. I want you to tell us, what is the best way that we can be allies with the LGBTQ plus community? Being a great ally is as simple as being a great friend. Ask how you're doing, and when they respond, listen. I always believe that the more diverse your friendship group is, the more diverse your worldview. You know, I think the best form of allyship that someone can offer the LGBTQ plus community right now, showing up, paying attention, and then doing something when you see something. Hey, Precious. <sighs> Oprah. Body inclusivity. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less on the runway. How can we make it more permanent? What I'm doing, I feel, is for this question to never be answered or asked again and that we can finally integrate and move forward. Little girls won't have to know necessarily that this is an anomaly or this is like on the brink, but it's there for them and it's already open. And I feel like you've done that for me and I hope that I can do that for others. Now I would like to ask Linda a question and Linda, here's my question for you. What do you love most about your body? Oh, Cindy, you know better than to ask me that question. I really like my waist because I got it from my grandma and she's snatched to this day. So big up Nanny for the waist. I like my ears, but I'm going to go with my feet. My feet are like my favorite part of my body. <laughs> I would like to ask Christy a question. Christy, where can we do better in making sure that women of all generations have a voice? Thank you, Kaya. Um, I think it's important for um, for each of us that does have a voice to invite others to also use their voice. It takes each one of us inviting the next person and um, you know carrying it forward. I wanted to ask a question to Oprah, and my question is, who is your style icon? Tina Turner. <laughs> Sorry. My style icon is Anita Palumbo. Probably Audrey Hepburn. Grace Jones and Bjork. Jane Fonda. My style icon is naturally probably my mom. My mother, do not tell her I said that. <laughs> um, having access to the wardrobe of my style icon makes it very easy to get dressed in the morning. I definitely go digging around in there. Who is my style icon? Young, cool kids, new generation, you know, always inspiring to see, um, you know, what young generation has in mind. I want to ask a question to Serena. Hey, Dua. Why is fashion so important to our identity? Obviously, you want people to connect on the inside, but you know, first impressions are really like your style, right? Fashion and identity, I think they're intertwined because we learn how play dress up as we are little girls uh, and little boys for that matter. Um, and uh, so it is, becomes really part of I, our identity. When I was in junior high, it was really important for me when I started going to thrift stores and dressing myself that I made a statement with the clothes that I wore to let the world know that I'm not who you might think I am. I'm, I'm something quite different. I have superpowers. <laughs> I found my personal style, I guess through trial and error, figuring out what works and what doesn't. It's really nice to see my fashion changing um, as the years go by. Fashion for me has been really instrumental in helping me feel comfortable outside because I'm a nervous and shy person, which might surprise you if you've seen my Twitter. It is an armor that makes me feel strong and powerful and glamorous and helps me take on a character that makes me feel strong enough to face the world. I think I found the confidence to be myself through fashion by just putting on an outfit, looking in the mirror and thinking, oh yeah, we can do whatever tonight. And I think that is the most beautiful thing about fashion. 
you can change your whole mood, your whole aura, your whole vibe, and just sometimes if you're feeling bad and you put on a good outfit, you're up again. So yeah, the power of just feeling yourself. I don't feel like I have a personal style and I don't care. I have a question for Sea Baby Miss Cara Delevingne. What was your favorite moment from today's shoot? Thank you, Gigi, for that question. Well, I'd never met Oprah before, and I, like, me and Adriel went and said hello, and she touched my arm, and we were both like, oh my God, she just touched us. She is, like, such a hero of mine, her and Jane Fonda. I sat next to Kaya, um, Maya Jama, and Naomi. And um, the funny thing is, is when we were shooting, Steven would be like, okay, get ready. And we would all hold our breaths. And then when, when Steven was like, I got it, we were all just like, oh, okay. <laughs> In the moment when I was shooting the cover, something that's happened to me before, um, I get to be next to my counterpart's daughter. <laughs> so I was next to Kaya. Love being around the young'uns. I love their energy, I love their spirit, I love their flow. I'm from a whole other generation's generations. I was sat just behind Miss Naomi, uh, sat just in front of Miss O, and sat just next to uh, Miss Selma. And I, I know them all intimately. They, they've become over my life uh, some really good friends and some really good mentors. Um, and it was just really nice to spend that time with them. We got the shot so quickly. Um, honestly, I kind of wish it was a bit longer. We were all having such wonderful discussions, but you know, Stephen's a genius and he only needs a second. My standout memory from shooting the cover today was making the huge mistake of talking to Oprah Winfrey about my bum hole that <laughs> I don't think she really enjoyed. <laughs> Please don't use that. <laughs> okay, you can use it. <laughs> I got to high five Oprah, so. There you go. Meeting so many people today that I could cross off on my bucket list. I mean, Jane Fonda. Ugh, oh, what a dream. Getting to meet Jane Fonda for the first time. Linda Evangelista does not disappoint. We've been friends on social media for some time. My standout memory from the shoot today would be meeting Iman because she's a Somali legend and has been my goat for the longest. So to actually see her in real life and have a moment with her was probably my favorite moment. Oh, and I met Oprah. Yeah, I mean, there was too many moments, I'll be honest. My standout memory from shooting this cover today is carpooling with my mom to work because that is not something that I get to do every day and it's such a pleasant, pleasant treat. <laughs> Cindy Crawford showing me where the camera was. That was a pretty big moment. Uh... <laughs> the song that he played was very, Surprising, it was like Pussycat something. Steven's choice of song, listening to What's New Pussycat with that collection of women over and over again was uh, something that will be seared in my mind forever. When the song ended, I looked to my left and Oprah was looking at me. She sort of did this. Hey, Gigi. <gasps> Linda asked me? Stop. Evangelista? Do you have a message for Edward? Of course, I have a message for Edward. Edward, I just wanna thank you for being a friend to us first and a human. Edward, I love you so much. Congratulations on everything you've done for British Vogue. Um, I can't wait to see what you do next. Mwah. My message for Edward is that I am ready for our endless summer vacation together. And I am so looking forward to seeing what you do with all this time for yourself to express and to be creative and anything that you want to do, I'm there. Edward, I love you. Thank you so much. You are a legend. Everything that you've done for British Vogue, from inclusivity to just breaking barriers and just making it the coolest magazine. I love you so much. Thank you. When we're young, we're not aware of what we're capable of achieving and I think you Edward saw that before I even realized so I'm very grateful for that oh I feel a bit emotional yeah take it in how much all of us that are gathered today love you and admire you I love you Edward and I love you Edward I love you and I love you <laughs> I'm so proud of you 
Okay, this was good. Thank you so much. Getting out of these shoes. Thank you so much.